Once again, good morning and welcome to our Practical Research 2 class. Now, today's topic will be on Chapter 4, Lesson 3, and it's on research techniques or instruments. Last time with Mam Su, you have tackled all about research um, sample, sampling techniques. So today, let's have some research techniques or instruments. Now, we start by reciting today's memory verse. And today's memory verse is found in Psalm 8, verses 4 to 6. It says, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with all glory and honor. So at the end of today's class, we'll be able to construct an instrument. And second is to establish the validity and reliability of research instruments. That's two big words to learn today. First is validity. And the second is reliability. To start with today's class, we'll be viewing a video. And it's entitled Instrument Development, a Step-by-Step -step Approach. This is a five-minute video wherein we'll be able to learn how to develop an instrument. In this presentation, I provide a brief overview of the steps involved in the process of here. In this presentation, I provide a brief overview of the steps involved in the process of instrument development. As you read different resources, you'll find that different researchers have different ways to break down these steps, but the overall process is the same regardless of the number of steps identified or how they are named. This slide lists the steps of instrument development in order. The remainder of this presentation will provide just a little bit of information about each of these steps. The first step in the instrument development process is deciding what you are going to measure, that is, identifying the construct of interest and then mapping out or defining the various levels of the construct. One way to work through this process is to create and utilize a construct map. This slide includes an example construct map, one for the construct of aggressive driving behaviors. A construct map is a visual representation of the continuum of a construct and the ideas or guidelines used to categorize individuals along that continuum. Construct maps represent an ordering of how people are measured on a particular construct and an ordering of responses used to help determine each individual's placement within the continuum for that construct. The second step in the instrument development process is writing the actual items that might be included on an instrument. It is important that we write items to reflect the entire construct, all aspects in which we are interested and different levels of each aspect, and we typically want to write more items than we would like to end up with. It is also important to have some redundancy in the items. The specific characteristics of well-written items are covered in a separate presentation, but some of the basic rules of thumb are to remember to write items that do not require too advanced a reading level, make sure your items are clear and concise, avoid asking two questions in one, and avoid double negatives. The third step in the instrument development process, selecting the format of response options, is related very closely to the previous step. When we generate items, we have to think about how we want respondents to provide answers to those items. There are a variety of response option formats available for both self-report and interviewer-administered items. The most important characteristic that distinguishes between these options is the type of information they yield, whether the response data are nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio. 
Ultimately, it's the researcher's goal to ask the questions they want to ask in such a way as to yield the data they really need so they can perform analyses and answer research questions that are consistent with the purposes of the instrument. Each response option is presented in more detail in a separate presentation. The fourth step in the process is inviting experts to review the pool of items. Experts can help review how you have defined and mapped the construct of interest and whether your definition makes sense within the context of the field and your research goals. Experts can also review individual items to help identify potentially problematic items that may not be related to the construct, may not be worded clearly and concisely, or might lead to non-response or measurement error for other reasons. Finally, experts can help evaluate the pool of items and let you know if there are important aspects of the construct that you might have overlooked. When we develop new items and new instruments, we have to think ahead about how we might demonstrate the validity of those instruments. A common way to do this is to decide whether we will administer other items or item sets along with our new ones for the purpose of demonstrating one or many types of validity. Two ways we do this are by including the questions from a social desirability instrument or a personality instrument, and then we can use those participant responses to those items to help us understand how the data collect we might be biased. We can also examine construct validity by measuring constructs that are theoretically related to our construct of interest. When a researcher seeks to develop a shorter instrument or an instrument that can be administered using a different mode, it's not uncommon to include an established gold standard instrument for comparison. Once we've generated our item pool and decided whether or not to include validation items, it's time to collect some data. As a general rule, the larger the sample size at this stage, the better. As a rough guideline, there is some empirical work which indicates that approximately 300 is a large enough sample size, but that estimate is predicated on the assumption that the items measure a single theoretical construct, that it's unidimensional, and that there are no more than about 20 items. The actual minimum sample size necessary for a good development sample varies depending on the number of factors being measured, the number of items, and the characteristics of the responses that are actually collected using those items. Once we have administered the items to a development sample and those responses are organized into a single data file, we can begin evaluating them statistically. To do this, it's important to consider the performance of each item individually as well as the performance of the entire set of items and various combinations of the items. This part of the instrument development process, the psychometric work, is discussed in detail in other presentations. As we evaluate our items, we have to make decisions about them. We have to decide whether the individual items or the overall item set are performing the way we want them to perform. If they are not satisfied with the items, we have to go back to earlier steps in the process. It might be necessary to make revisions to our item pool, such as writing new items, fixing confusing wordings, changing response formats. We then have to work through the data collection and item evaluation steps again. Basically, we just repeat steps two to seven until we are satisfied with both our item pool and the performance of those items. Here are some sources on instrument development you might find helpful if you'd like to learn more about the importance of each step in this process. Now, thank you for that video. Now, before we go further, let me first ask you, um, can you type in the chat box, what is your um, approved research title? Again, I'll give you a minute to type in the chat box, what is your approved research title? So my discussion can go with that flow and you can also relate. Again, in the chat box, you please type your approved research title. Now, let us continue with today's discussion. Now, based on the video, we have seen the step-by-step -step process of doing of developing an instrument. First, we need to identify. Hello. 
first we need to identify the construct. Like what are the variables that, I'm, I, that I am going to measure? Second, we will generate the item poll. What possible questions could there be? Then third, the third step is we will select response option format. Will it be an open questionnaire or will it be a Likert, Likert scale from one to five? Or is it only, it will only be a checklist like check or X or a rating scale? These are your questions. Then in step number four, we need an expert, an expert to review if our questions, our item questions are correct. Then in the next step, we will validate the, the, the items. Then we administer the instrument and we check again on the results of the instrument. Actually, it's a very long process. Now, what are we talking today? Today, we'll be talking about a research instrument. Now, what is a research instrument? For example, my study is on the, the relationship of mathematics attitudes and the achievement and the performance of students. Now, main question, how will I measure attitude? And how will I measure achievement or performance? This is a very big question for me as a researcher because it will tell me whether my study is feasible, it's possible, or not. That's why a research instrument is very important. Soon you will have your <laughs> research advisors. And the main question will be, how will you measure your variable? For example, okay. Now, here's the first one, the first title from Kaiser, Classical Music and Reading Comprehension Level Among High School Students. Um, let me ask you directly here so that I can guide you in the process. Now, Kaiser, let me ask you, how will you measure reading comprehension level? Any ideas? By sampling method, ma'am. Again? By sampling method. Now, let methods. me ask you, Willa, use a sampling method. Do you have an instrument to measure comprehension level? Yes, ma'am. Okay, what instrument is that? Um, through asking them, ang methodology, ang best methodology na po na dapat gamitin is through formulating the questions and mag na ang some best about okay. sa reading comprehension nila through scaling. Through a scale. Uh, um, they mag ask me ma'am among study man is about classical music and reading comprehension which is unsay unsa na apektuhan ang reading comprehension while listening to classical music so mga tana mi ma'am is if in a scale of 1 to 5 how will you rate your reading comprehension while you're listening to a classical music mm -hmm. here um uh, let me first give you a, a bird's eye view advice, advice style here please uh, i wanted to open up everything so i could guide you and Whatever my comments are, please don't um, take it positively, okay? Let's do constructive criticism here. Now, that's a very good idea, Kaiser, reading comprehension. Like after listening to the classical music, I will rate from one to five. But research speaking, the instrument is not okay because I need to have a standard instrument to be sure, for example, because if we will be the ones to rate, like, ah, okay, listen, uh, then I understood. I'll write there five. Here's another student. And he also understood, but he'll just give three. But in reality, his reading comprehension is better than mine. So our instrument 
must not be subjective. It must be standardized. Please take note of that word. The word is standardized. For example, we need to look for standard instruments for reading comprehension. For example, in the academy, we have the SRA kit, the Science Research Associates kit. So we will ask, okay, you listen to classical music first, then after you answer this test. There will be a story, and then they will answer items 1 to 10. By that, we can measure reading comprehension. Okay, let's go to another one from Joshua. Student perceptions of learning environment and academic performance. Now, Joshua, do you have any instrument in mind? How will you measure academic performance? Uh... I'm not so sure about academic performance, mom. Ah, here, academic performance, there are two ways to measure academic performance. First is, like, you really have a, an examination. Then, after that one, the test score will be the academic performance. Or another way is, it can be through your grade or through your GPA. So, it should be standard. Now, who else? Because you see that you are in groups, right? How about student perceptions of learning environment? Joshua was with you. Um, it's me, Alyssa Rakoma, Luigi Senna, and um, Cheng. Okay, but you're the only one who's here, so I'll ask you again. How will you measure student perceptions of learning environment? Through questionnaires, mom. Ah, oh, questionnaire. Can you give me a sample question? Um... I'll give you a, I'll give you some time to, to think, Joshua. Then after you'll share with us, okay? Okay. Now, let's go back. That's why I told you we need to think wisely of our research instrument because it's very important. Without the research, the research instrument will tell you whether you can go with your data gathering, whether you're in the right direction for your research. Now there are two categories for the instruments. First is the researcher completed instruments. The researcher completed instrument will be answered by the researcher himself or herself. For example, rating scale. So somebody is doing, um, is doing an activity, I'll rate. Or another, interview schedules or guide. I'll be the interviewer, so basically, I'll be the one to take notes of the responses. Another, tally sheets, like what happens in a basketball game. The researcher or the scorer is the one doing the instrument. Flow charts or performance checklist, time and motion logs, and observation form. For example, you'll do a case study on how students are behaving in an online distance learning and you'll have an observation form so the researcher will be the one to take note of the observed behaviors but another way another type of instrument is the subject completed instrument this is the common instrument that they usually see like we print questionnaires then we distribute them that is a subject completed instrument example questionnaires you print questionnaires on attitude then you let them answer or self checklist or attitude scales personality inventories 
achievement test, we say these are examinations. That's a subject completed instrument, projective devices, and sociometric devices. When the participant or the subject is the one answering the instruments, we call it subject completed instruments. But if it's the researcher who answers the instrument, then we call it a researcher completed instrument. Now, there are two big words that we will learn today. First is validity, and the second is reliability. These two words are very important in determining your instrument, validity and reliability. Let's start with validity. What is validity? If we say validity, it means it the instrument measures what it intends to measure. For example, let's go back to my research title, the relationship between attitude towards math and academic performance. If I'll have a questionnaire on attitude towards mathematics, I should ask, are the questions or are the items measuring attitude towards math? Or it might be um, measuring the attitude towards the teacher, towards the mathematics teacher, and not towards the subject. For example, here's a question. I like my math teacher. Is it a question towards attitude towards math? Or should the item be, I like to study mathematics? You see, these are two different things. So validity tells us that the instrument measures what it intends to measure. Now, there are three types of validity. The first is content validity. If you say content validity, it means that all items are measuring the same content. Example, attitude towards mathematics. If you have 10 items from item one to 10 through 10, it will all be about attitude towards mathematics and not about motivation, not about belief, not about um, student engagement. The next is the construct validity. If we say construct validity, if this measurement is talking about this, is the reality also saying the same? Example, you will measure anxiety, anxiety level in math. Based on the questionnaire, the anxiety level in math is really high. Now, we compare it with the real-life construct. In real life, did the student manifest these high anxiety, math, high math anxiety symptoms? Like during examination, is it true that the student is sweating heavily? Or, for example, um, if anxiety is related to depression, is it true that when the student is starting to take a math class, he or she starts to feel depressed. So that is a construct validity. And the last is criterion validity. In criterion validity, it will ask us, is my instrument in attitude towards mathematics the same with the instrument Mr. So-and-so also made in the same construct? In, the, in validity to um, mathematics attitude. Now, for example, let's go back to Kaiser. If you will measure reading comprehension that way, you will ask, is the way I measure reading comprehension the same with how the SRA associates measure reading comprehension? Now, that will be for your criterion validity. Now, 
I only have two minutes left. So I want you to leave the class, the room first, then come back right away. Will that be okay? 